Keep spinning around, but you're not alone. Welcome to the 10 Minutes for MS podcast, in which we share information about MS in just 10 minutes. In this episode, I'm glad to welcome Dr. Jivan Moore, a chiropractor specialized in Lyme disease, parasites, gut health, and other viruses and pathogens. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. So before we proceed, doctor, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Dr. Javen Moore. And, you know, my, my background was I went through training to be more of a sports med doc and I ended up getting Lyme disease. Yeah. And once I got Lyme disease, it just took me down this journey of trying to understand why my body was shutting down, why I was having fatigue and pain. And, and it led me to working with Lyme disease patients. And when these people come in, they have every number of, of chronic illness, but nerve issues are one of the most common. So I've seen a lot of multiple sclerosis. I've seen a lot of people with seizures and losing the ability to control certain parts of their body and numbness and tingling. And I've seen a lot of recoveries from that just simply by getting some of these bugs out. So um, MS is definitely something that has been an interest of mine, even to see uh, clients of mine who have gotten MRIs where we see lots of spotting and over time spotting stopping. And even in some very um, amazing times, seeing some regression. So since how long have you got this Lyme disease, if you don't mind? Well, I didn't, I don't know how long I have had it, but uh -huh. I found out about Lyme disease while I was in school, while I was going through my training. And that was back in 2012. So I was on the search of trying to find someone who could help me. And with Lyme disease, it typically takes, I don't know, 20 different doctors before you're gonna be able to find someone who's gonna be able to help you. And in my experience, after having all of these doctors and, and running around and trying to get help, I finally drove up to Wisconsin and after about a year of working with Dr. Alan Lindsley, I was able to get to the point where I feel like, you know, I haven't really had symptoms. I've had to treat ever since. And uh, doctor, you know what? I've been seeing that so many people from U.S. that we talk to are having Lyme disease. And I have also noticed that many of them have MS and Lyme disease both. Mm -hmm. Is there any kind of correlationship between them? Yeah, there is actually a correlation. So I was, I looked up PubMed a long time ago when I first started getting a lot of MS people in. And there was some studies that showed that Lyme uh, spirochetes, which is a type of bacteria, can get into the brain within 12 hours. And when they do autopsies on people with MS, they're actually finding that many, many people with MS have those spirochetes in their brain, in their tissue, especially in the white spots. Okay, that's why so many people are actually complaining of Lyme and MS. What do you think, having Lyme and MS together, is it too difficult to balance two diseases? You know, my opinion is MS is a, a symptom of some sort of root cause. So if you have Lyme, Lyme may be triggering MS. Or honestly, there's also studies showing that nematodes, which are a type of parasite, are also in very high correlation with MS. So when we're talking about an autoimmune or a physiological disease, which MS is, right. for me, I'm going, well, the body's not just stripping down the nerves, demyelinating them for fun. It's not just happening because you're alive and well. No, it's happening because there's something going on. And that something could be Lyme. It could be MS. It could be mercury. So for me, it's what is the root cause of MS? How do we remove that root cause so that the body can either shut down the processes or you know, in, in a very amazing way. Sometimes, like I said, I've seen MRIs where people come in, they're like, look, my MRI is different, it's better. How is parasites related to MS? Yeah, so very similarly to, to Lyme, when I was looking through studies, there were studies showing that those nematodes were in the brain and damaging brain tissue, and especially in the pockets and areas where we had a lot of demyelinization. So with parasites, what they do is they can get into your body and their job is to multiply and to make more of themselves. 
while they're doing that, they have waste and that waste is neurotoxic. So it circulates through the body and those neurotoxins can actually damage tissue, especially brain tissue, because once something crosses the, the blood brain barrier and gets into the brain, then it's very difficult to get out. And you also don't have nearly the same lymphatic flow. You don't have the same type of immune system in your brain. You do have both, but it's not quite the same. So if we're dealing with someone with neurological Lyme or neurological parasite or neurological toxicity, uh, we've got to really work to get the rest of the body cleaned out because so often with MS, we have people with clogged up drainage pathways. So we've got poor digestion or we have constipation. Things start to slow down, which then leaves you more toxic. And now it's an accumulation of multiple problems, such as the toxins, the infections, and you have the degeneration of the brain, which then slows down the other pieces. So that's why detoxing the body is very much important for everyone. Yes, absolutely. If you're not going to the bathroom, that is step one all around. You must go to the bathroom every single day and fully. It is never acceptable to go less than once a day. Ideally, we go a few times a day, but that is just the beginning of detox. And it's a must. If you have MS, then we need to be looking for those root causes. We need to be getting out the toxins and infections. And if you're not focusing on that and we're just focusing on what medication is next, then we're not looking at what the root of this is. We're just trying to slow things down, which is okay to slow things down as long as we're getting to the root of it. So many MS patients, they all complain about constipation problem, bladder problem. So if someone complains about that, what will be your suggestion? Well, we'll start with constipation because honestly, those two are very different for me. So if it's constipation, the different things that I like to use. So I use aloe 450, I use bowel mover, I use magnesium citrate or oxide. All of those are great tools for us to use and they allow for us to take those next steps forward. Whereas for the bladder, the bladder can get a little bit more complicated because mm -hmm. if we are detoxing or if you're toxic, you have high oxalates. You could have high amounts of acetylaldehyde or ammonia. And to make sure that that's not irritating your bladder, we have to put some kind of binder in that will bind those up or avoid oxalates in our diet. So I get a lot of burning pain from patients that are coming in. So with that burning pain, that's when I run that organic acid test you talked about earlier to see, do we have some kind of oxalate overload that's going on whenever your urinalysis is testing negative for things like bacteria and yeast? But how is this uh, organic acid test is exactly done? And should so, everybody be going through it? You know, it is one of my favorite tests. It's actually become one of my standards. So the organic acid test is a urine test. It's mailed to your home. You just pee in the cup. You send it back to the lab. The lab sends you results. So it's so easy, even for people that are in lockdown still. It's, been, it's become my favorite test for this, this whole uh, virus situation, because I don't have to send you into a lab. And should everybody do it? You know, I'll let everybody else answer that for themselves. It's going to test molds can be so detrimental to anybody's health, especially people with multiple sclerosis, because it's overwhelming and immunosuppressive. So it lets all these other organisms take off in your body. But it's also testing for yeast, many bacterial overgrowths, oxalates, which I was talking about for the urinary issue, but oxalates also can increase anxiety and pain. So it's going to, uh, you know, oxalates can be multiple in their symptom causing background. We also have in that the mitochondria, it is incredibly important to know how your energy system is working when you're going through a treatment plan, especially from the start. So if you're looking like colysis, your Krebs cycle, your vision, all three of your different energy systems, and you're seeing a lot of markers off, your ability to heal, your ability to coordinate your immune system. It's not going to be working properly. So organic acid test is one of the few tests that I see that actually tests for that. Tests for nutrient absorption, neurotransmitters, so why are you anxious or depressed, along with amino acid absorption, detoxification pathways. There's 77 different tests. One that is how many minerals are you absorbing? So for me, it's just a great beginning point to understand where we're starting and what your capacity for healing is or do i need to just simply build your body up before we can really go in and get going after some of these infections
Thank you so much, Doctor, for you know helping us answer all our questions today. You know, it was incredible. Thank you so much for all your time, Doctor. Thanks for having me. Bye. Thank you, warriors, for being with us. I hope you found this session useful. We will be back again next week with another informative session. So don't forget to subscribe and reserve. Just ten minutes for MS. No, you're not alone.